quite the crew you brought out here. A lot of friends. Uh, yeah. Just talk about uh, how big of an honor this is tonight. This is, this is amazing. I mean, Central Michigan, it's no place I'd rather be than here. And I love this place. I've always had. I think we have the best the best teachers and, and the best community, you know, I think in, I think in, the, in the state of Michigan. And I'm just really happy to be back. It's, it's a real honor. Um, you know, I had a lot of great people uh, to help me be here, a lot of great teammates, a lot of great coaches. So it's not about me, it's about those people, and I'm here to honor them today. When you found out that you were going to be inducted, what was your initial reaction? Shocked, out of my mind, shocked. You know, had no idea, absolutely no idea. Um, it wasn't one of my goals, so I never thought about Hall of Fame or stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm still shocked. So, CMU has changed quite a bit since uh, you were last here. New facility yeah, here. Yeah, but none of this stuff was here. I mean, this place it looks amazing. I'm um, so happy to be here. Like the, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm floored. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm just floored to be here. It's, it's wonderful. What's your uh, greatest memory as a, a Chippewa? Of course, you scored 51 points, which. Uh, I mean, maybe not yeah. your greatest memory, no. but uh, a lot of Chippewa fans remember that one. Yeah, my greatest memory uh, was the locker room. It was being in the locker room with the guys and hanging out with the guys and eating in the cafeteria with the guys. Those are my best memories about Central Michigan. Nothing basketball related as far as actually playing a game. My best memories were off the, off the court. Well, I noticed coming in tonight that Coach Keno Davis and some of his staff are here tonight, so I want to welcome them and tell them not to get any ideas because unfortunately this next inductee has used up all of his eligibility here at CMU. He's one of the most storied student athletes in Chippewa basketball history, the 2001 Mid-American Conference Player of the Year and Associated Press All-American. He was one of just 16 finalists for the Oscar Robertson National Player of the Year Award. As a junior, this inductee further cemented his legacy by leading the league in scoring and taking the Chippewas to the 2001 Mid-American Conference title. And in a performance some of us will never forget, he scored an amazing 51 points right here on this court on February 24, 2000 that set a Rose Arena record against the Cardinals of Ball State. He was a leader from the beginning, recording more minutes on the court than any of his teammates as a freshman, establishing himself as a four-year starter and capping his career with CMU's prestigious Bill Boyd Leadership Award. Ladies and gentlemen, now being inducted into the CMU Athletics Hall of Fame, class of 2012, your basketball star from 1999 through 2002, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, via Detroit, David Weber. David? My suit's a little tight, so forgive me. It took me a little time to get up the steps, but <laughs> it's called jokes. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just so happy to be here. First off, congratulations to you guys. It's an amazing honor for you guys and also the past recipients of this award and a special, a special uh, congratulations to uh, Kevin Young, who's, who's not here today, but I hear he's, a, he's an ap you know, amazing athlete and even better person. So, you know, congratulations to him and his family. Um, um, I just want to first, I want to, you know, I was so happy to be here at Central Michigan. Like, I, I love this place. You know, I'm, I'm not able to really get here very often, but I absolutely love this place. I think we had the best teachers in the world. I remember my teachers always getting on me um, about coming to class two minutes late. I was always two minutes late. I don't know why. But, and so, um, but I had to be at the, at the best time here. And, and, and so to the president and the athletic director, I, I really thank you guys. I thank the university for a very you know, great opportunity for me to, to, to be back here and to be able to go to this school. I want to thank God first. I'll get to him later because I got to talk about him for a second. I want to thank uh, my family who's always supportive. Okay. We say we're not going to do this, right? We're not going to. There's no tears today. We'll be happy today. So thank my family. Um, my uncle and my father and Mr. Montgomery came to all, most of my games. It's a two-hour drive. They would drive up and drive right back. And sometimes we had two games in the same week, sometimes three games in the same week. And they always found a way to get up here. So I think, especially my father, thank you, and my mom. Um, to my teammates and my coaches, I had the best teammates in the world. In particular, a guy named Todd Simmons and Teddy Baggett, who really taught me how to be a Christian. I thank them and, and um, also thank Mike Mansell, Whitney Robinson, and Tim Kisner in particular because they sacrificed a lot of their games 
for me, and they passed me the ball, and they could easily be standing up here today, especially Tim Kisner. I think he was, the, in, my, in my opinion, the best point guard to ever play here. So um, he could easily be standing up here today, but he sacrificed a lot of his game for me. So thank you, Tim and, and Whitney and, and, and Mike Mansell. Um, but today really isn't about me, so I'm not going to talk about me at all, honestly. Today's about God's perfect timing. Here we go again. When you start to cry, you got to start messing with you, you know, do stuff like this to make you stop crying. But God's timing is perfect. As I look back on my life, everything was lined up exactly how I was supposed to be. Um, come on, Dave. Come on. The story of my life. Come on. The story of my life is Ephesians 3.20. It says, unto he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, unto him be the glory. Unto he who is able, he's able, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or even think to do. I never thought I would be standing up here. It never crossed my mind, to be honest. Hall of Fame, I don't know. What's that? So that verse has always been a story of my life. He keeps doing things and doing things and doing things that I don't expect him to do. That I don't even ask him to do. Unto he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think to do. He's able. What does that mean? It means he can do it. But he has to do it with your agreement. So you have to have a good attitude. He's able, able, able. You have to have a good attitude. If you have a bad attitude, softball team, or the soccer team, you have a bad attitude and you blame God when you don't hit the ball or you can't score the goal and your attitude is bad. He's able to do exceedingly above what you can ask or think, but your attitude is bad. So have a good attitude, able, be. B is for belief. You have to believe in yourself. People have told you you can't do it, you can't win a MAC championship, you never win a national championship, but you have to believe in yourself. God placed people in my life, perfect timing, perfect timing, exactly when I needed them. When I was, give you a quick story, I was 11 years old, we were playing in the YBOF, I believe it is, or YBOA national championship, and we had just won, and I'm bawling, crying, I scored eight points, had 11 rebounds. I was crying because I was the center. I'm the center. And I knew I would never play in the NBA playing center. And my heart hurt really bad and I'm sitting there crying. I'm like, God, and God sent a guy by the name of Curtis, by the name of Curtis Hervey to come up and watch me play in Philadelphia. And he came and he started a whole new AAU basketball team with me playing point guard the very next week. The very next week. And Curtis Herbie believed in me. So we started that team, he believed in me. If you don't believe in yourself and have people who believe in you, you probably won't get too far, but don't, don't blame God. L, legacy. A legacy is nothing but choices, good choices over time, that's all it is. You make good choices day after day after day, you build legacy. You stand up here. It's just good choices, that's all it was. I went to class, did what I, did what I was supposed to do, listen to my coaches, listen to the guys, the upperclassmen. That's how you build legacy, by making good choices. And lastly, energy. 
Energy just means working hard. That's all it means. It means working as hard as you can. God is able. Have a good attitude. He's able. Believe in yourself. He's able. Leave legacy. Make good choices every day over time. He's able. How hard will you work? Have good energy. Work hard. I had a guy by the name of Jason Plunkett who rebounded for me every single day. My freshman year, sophomore year, and junior year in particular, I shot every single day. I was slow. I can't jump. My brother Jason would tell you I'm the worst athlete in my family. But I worked my butt off. That's energy. And I thank you, Jason Plunkett, too, for that. i leave, with you, leave you with this. There's nothing you control. You just think you do. You only control your attitude. You control your belief. You control your legacy, meaning your choices. And you control your energy, meaning your work ethic. That's all. The rest is God's perfect timing. That's it. Thank you very much.